my I'm like an ape. Like I take off my shirt. I'm literally like kids run away. It's like a beast. So the pain under the neck from a laser, like how many treatments do you have to get for something like that? Well, if you're white, it's a lot less, but um, <laughs> probably about 15, 16 of them. I'm really? almost done. I basically grow no hair on my neck now. So that's a time saver for sure. <laughs> so it's just, you just don't like shaving. Is that why you did it? Yeah. And just, I can never train the gi because the, the gi would like rip out my hairs. And I get a bunch of zits and that never looks good. and didn't feel good. So I've always been very, like, weird about things touching my neck. Mm. But I have to shave every day. But when you shave every day, you get, like, cuts and you get staff and all those things. So I had MRSA a few years ago from a shaving accident. So really? I've had a little bit of, like, trauma from that. So now I try to shave only on week, only on Sunday, when I know I'm not going to be training afterwards. And the next where I'm most likely to cut myself. So I just decided to laser it off. Okay, I'm gonna ask you this question, and we're talking about hair. Do you shave your balls? Ah, uh, sometimes. <laughs> fight week? Do you do a full body shave? That like going into a fight? I always wonder because you see guys manscaped to the gills going into fights, and then you see hairy beasts. Do you do you shave everything down before a fight? Yeah, it's itchy when you cut weight. No one wants to lose 20 pounds of water and be itchy. So, <laughs> at least for my rationale, I'm like, okay, let's get this all you know smooth. There you go. It, I go, but yeah, I, I can't imagine. I don't understand those fighters who are just freaking like Forrest Griffin up, hair everywhere. I'm like, that must not be comfortable. Okay, so you respect your opponents and you go in there nice, clean shaven, and, and that's very good. Well, sometimes if you let the hair go in on your chest, it gets a little stubbly. And if you're doing a submission or something, maybe you could, you know, irritate their face with your stubbles. You know, like kind of like do a little motorboat action from that. <laughs> Face up, giving some exfoliating action. I don't know. <laughs> that before. <laughs> Jordan, please motorboat. Uh, have Patty Pimblet motorboat you. That would be the most amazing thing in the world. If if you got on top a mount, just just shove his face in your chest. I mean, that would be amazing. I'll do my best. <laughs> The theme for this fight, for sure. <laughs> so, so the people, I mean, the twerk seems like it was a hit. You go in there, you twerk, and everyone's bringing it up. They're saying, oh, my God, Patty Pimblet's going to lose. You're going to twerk on top of him. Do you feel now that you hit the twerk, you have to level up this fight over here? Or are you going to double down with the twerk? Like, what are we going to see here? You know, I was hoping to leave the twerk behind me. But I think this would be a perfect stage to bring it out again and see the reaction from the crowd and all the scousers that travel from Liverpool to see their hero. It'd be pretty fun to kind of troll one of the most notoriously hostile crowds in MMA. I'm pretty excited for the opportunity. I pissed off a lot of people throughout my country, but I've never gone abroad, so it should be fun. <laughs>